Does your kitchen area look like this? Mine does. But maybe you need a clutter workshop. I went to one, and you're going to get the workshop free from the author of... Now, wait a second. I know the book's here somewhere. <laughs> I know it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's here. It's the... Oh, wait. Here it is. It's called Taming the Paper Tiger, and it's by Barbara Hemphill. And bless her heart, she's here with us today. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sarah. Now, you look at all this, and you need these things. Now, let me just show you some of the stuff our prop department came up with, and I think they found this out of my kitchen. Picture of the black dog with the rabbit ears on it. You need that. Absolutely. And then over here, you need the 8x10 color portrait gift certificate. If it isn't up there, you're going to forget it's there. So what do you do? What do you do about all this, Barbara? Well, the first thing to remember is that clutters postpone decisions. The reason all those pile up is that there's a decision that hasn't been made. Okay. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. My father used to say half of any job is having the right tool. Yes. So one of the things we want to discuss today are seven tools that you can use to help get these things into control when you want them. All right. What do you first need? First tool is the to sort. Now, some people think of that as the in-basket, for, but for a lot of people, that becomes a depository for postponed decisions. Don't uh -huh. know what to do with it, put it back in. Think of it as a place to put the stuff you've not yet looked at. Pick it out of here and say, okay, what next? Next option, wonderful tool, <laughs> the art of wastebasket. The circular file. That's right. Okay. It's an essential skill. The question, of course, is huh, what can you keep, what can you throw away? It's so hard because you think, ooh, I might want that later. Fine. I just think I might read that later. We're going to have a place to put that. If you want it later, that's okay. okay. If you ask yourself the question, what's the worst possible thing that could happen if I didn't have this, and you're willing to live with it, throw it away. If you're not, keep it. Okay. Next question okay. is, tool is the calendar. All right. Is this piece of paper related to the calendar in any way? Does it remind you of something you want to do three weeks from now? Go to your calendar. Calendars come in many different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter. You can, there's a whole chapter in the book discussing how to choose your style of calendar. That is a swell idea. I like that. So then what you can do is pick the page where you might want this gift certificate for that 8 by 10 free color portrait. Exactly. And you can put it on that page exactly. and make call up and make the appointment. And sometimes you can throw the piece of paper away because you don't need the piece of paper. You just need the reminder. Okay. The next one is your to-do list. You know, some of us make to-do lists of to-do lists. Oh, yeah. But a to-do list is a place to write down those things you don't want to forget, but they're not time-related yet. I want to get to these someday. Mm -hmm. Next tool is a wonderful tool, which a lot of people use in their offices but don't think of in their homes, and that's the Rolodex. It's like a mini file. Many of these pieces of paper that come out of here have a name, a number, a phone number. So you say, if I wanted to contact this person again, what word would I think of first? Last name, first name, service. Maybe it's the piano tuner or the plumber. Or even who introduced you. You may not remember their name, but you would remember that you met them at Sally's house. Cross-reference it on the Rolodex. Okay. The next category is what I call action files. Mm -hmm. Many of those pieces of paper that you picked up over there were there because you wanted to call somebody or you're waiting. For example, one of my favorite action files is this one, calls waiting. You have a piece of paper in your hand, you call somebody to ask them something, they're not in, and you leave a message. And then the question is, now where do I put this? So they say, this is Sarah returning your calls. <gasps> oh my gosh, where did I put it? Calls waiting. And no matter how cluttered your desk gets, you can recognize this and you can very calmly say, oh yes, thank you for returning my call. And you've got it. Because truly, if they don't call you back for a couple of days, you've forgotten why you called them. If I, forget, I forget if they put me on hold. Exactly. I sit there and I start <laughs> writing a thank you note while I'm waiting on hold, and then they come back and they go, hello. <laughs> and you're going, who is this? I totally <laughs> forgot. And one of the things you can do, you can have call, a call file, and if you need to make the call by a certain time, Go back and use your calendar again. Make a note in your calendar to call somebody and then put a C in a circle, which reminds you that the piece of paper you're going to talk to them about is in the call file. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Now, the last tool is probably the most important in any home. Most of those pieces of paper are there because we may need them at some point in the future. Medical records, educational records, insurance policies, warranties, and all those sorts of things. In the back of the book, I've listed a checklist of all the different kinds of things that you might want in your house. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason we have difficulty with files is that the same information can be filed under automobile, car, 
Chrysler transportation or vehicle. Uh -huh. It's not right or wrong, it's just different. Uh -huh. It doesn't make any difference what you call it as long as you're consistent. The problem is how do you remember that? Because today I call it automobile. There's a very simple solution, yeah. and that's a file index, which is simply a list of the names that you use. And uh -huh. you put that file index in the file right in the front, and then before you file a new paper, instead of making a new file, you check the list and say, ah, I called it insurance-automobile, not automobile insurance. And uh -huh. then you won't make a new list. And that's a, such an important tool that most people never think about. One of the ways you can assess whether your system is working or not is to go back and make a list of all the files that you already have and then look at that piece of paper and check it. And then you'll say, oh, wait a minute. You know, uh -huh. I've got community association up here. And then up here, I've got association community. I've got the same thing. So the file index is a real important this tool. This is fabulous. Thank you so much, Barbara. Would you come back and talk to us about how to organize a child's room? I'd love and to. And maybe to how to help the children organize their own room? I have five of them. I know all about it. Deal. <laughs> OK, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Taming the paper tiger. Good information. Next. Homemade cookies fresh from the oven in only 15 minutes. Then I go ahead and I pick up all the clutter because I can't stand it. I cannot stand clutter. I am a very, very, very neat person. Nina McElwee is not a professional organizer. She's a born neatnik. She doesn't need a system to help her get organized. But most of us aren't like Nina, which is why Barbara Hemphill wrote Taming the Paper Tiger. Barbara is a professional organizer. Organization often gets a bad name because people think of it as meaning inflexible and boring and dull and things like that. The way I look at organization is that organization is a tool to help you accomplish what you want to accomplish. Barbara started her career helping people to organize their closets and car trunks. And collections and photograph albums. But then people began to say to me, would you come to my office? But, of course, they wanted me to come evenings and weekends because they didn't want the boss to know that I was there. She found the basics of organization were the same for both home and office, with one big difference. At work, you have the tools that you need to get organized. You have a desk. You have support systems. So what's the key to getting organized at home? Space. Just enough so that everything, your bills, your computer, if you use one, are all within easy reach anytime you need them. One of my clients used a front hall closet. She literally took the closet rods out of the front hall closet, put shelves in it, put a stool in it, so that when she'd come in at night, she opened up that closet, took the mail, put it there, immediately sorted it, and it worked perfectly. This is Kiplinger's personal finance report. This is clutter. This is a wastebasket. Unfortunately, many of us don't connect one with the other as often as we should. Because people get really nervous about throwing things away. And you say, you know, why are you afraid to throw it away? Well, I might need it, or somebody might be mad at me, or, uh, you know, I might get audited by the IRS. That's always the biggest one. In her job as a professional organizer, and Barbara so goes to a lot of homes and offices where the biggest complaint is space, not enough of it. And how could there be with so much stuff? The volume of of paper and information and magazines and newspapers and whatever may be totally unmanageable. So the first thing we do in the organizing process is to let go of whatever you don't need. And I call that the art of wastebasketry. In her book, Taming the Paper Tiger, Barbara says the best way to answer the question, do I really need this, is by asking yourself a few other questions. Questions like, when was the last time you used this? Does it exist in another form? If you've got it uh, in a manual, for example, then you don't need to have a photocopy. But my favorite art of wastebasketry question is, what's the worst possible thing that would happen if I didn't have this piece of paper? And if we did bite the bullet and actually toss it, how difficult would it be to replace it? That's often the key to whether we truly need it or not. There's still more possibilities than we can ever manage. And so the challenge becomes identifying the things that really make a difference. This is Kiplinger's personal finance report. It's nothing that anyone ever taught me to do. It's just the system that works for me. Maria Robinson's job is to keep her employer's files organized so coworkers can find information on clients easily and quickly. At the tender age of 24, she's got filing down to a science. She even uses her system at home to keep her personal life running smoothly. 
Trouble is, most of us aren't like Maria. I talked to a man who graduated from Harvard Business School, and he said, how does it happen that we graduate hundreds of thousands of people from business school, and no one ever tells us how to file? Barbara Hemphill has the answer. In her book, Taming the Paper Tiger, she calls it fear of filing. There are two reasons that people don't like to file. They don't know where to put it so they can find it again. And two, it's physically uncomfortable to get it there. To overcome filing phobia, find adequate space to store the files you need. In the office, throw away what you don't need to make room for what you do. At home, buy a filing cabinet or other storage boxes and keep a space set aside just for organizing. Then, label everything. People may not always put it back in the right place, but the chance is infinitely better. And even if they don't, when you go back to reorganize it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. File everything first by general categories. Then go back and break down the categories into smaller subject files. Once complete, make a file index so you can remember where everything is. We get organized when we see value in doing so. And people decide to get organized when the price they pay for disorganization is a higher price than they're willing to pay. This is Kiplinger's Personal Finance Report. It's 18 minutes past the hour. I'll bet you didn't know this is National Clean Off Your Desk Day. And if you want to get your life in order, that mess on your desk is as good a place as any to start. The current family circle has some help to get the job done, and so does the new book, Kiplinger's Taming the Paper Tiger. Barbara Hempel is the book's author, and she's here with some major clutter-busting advice this morning. I could use some of that. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Paula. So everybody says when they look at a messy desk, it's the sign of a very sick mind. Say it ain't so this morning, <laughs> please. Absolutely. I'd say it's very common. I don't think neatness has anything to do with uh, being organized. Organized is simply, does it work and do you like it? So paper is so difficult for everybody to control, both at home and at work. Right. I mean, we live in a household where I can't part with newspapers that have been sitting around for a month and a half, and that's, I'm sure a lot of people are that way. That's the reason I wrote the book, because I found that people really struggled with that issue. So get us started here this morning. What's the first piece of advice you get someone who's well, staring at this much paper? Clutter is postponed decisions, and there's really only three decisions you can make on any piece of paper. You can throw it away, right? you can file it, or you can take action on it. Taking action is the hardest of those three <laughs> things, I'm afraid. Um, uh, here's an in-basket, which is frequently, for many people, a depository for postponed decisions. They don't oh, know what yeah. to do with it, and they just keep it in the in-basket. That old admonition about handle a piece of paper only once doesn't work for most people, but if you think about handle it only once from the in-basket to decide whether you're going to throw it away, file it, or act on it. So is that the biggest single thing you can do to control the paper tiger, as it were, or not? In terms of throwing it away? Yeah. Or, well, it's certainly an important factor. A lot of people have more stuff because they're afraid. I mean, fear is what keeps us from throwing things away, for fear that we'll need it in another day. Now, you actually go in and spend time organizing people's offices. That's right. So we're going to take a look years. at you at work. Right. Tell us what you're doing here. Okay. Well, here we are at a desk that I think is pretty typical of a creative, intelligent person. Lots of paper. Um, here we're processing the decision-making, and I'm working with Jennifer to help her make those decisions by asking the question, what is the next action you need to take on this piece of paper? Uh, the wastebasket, 40% of the papers can be eliminated by recycling or throwing, another 40% by using files. Uh, here we're talking about how she can s create a filing system that's easy for her to use and that will work for her particular situation. Drawers become a problem. <laughs> Those here. look like mine. Here we're sorting things together and putting them in a container that will hold them. A Rolodex is a great tool for minimizing paper. If you inherit somebody else's, ignore it and start over. Take that number and name off that pink slip. Once you've made the call, throw the pink slip away and your calendar. Now here we are just getting things in their final form. Organization is basically, does it work? Here it didn't, and here it does. And I asked her, does it work and do you like it? And she answered yes to both. You can't tell me the desk looks like that today, does Absolutely. it? Exactly. Absolutely. I talked to her several weeks later, and she said, or several days later, and she said it was fine. And I think if you called her several weeks from now, you'll find out it's still the same. That doesn't mean it's always going to be neat. 
The, the thing about a place for everything and everything in its place, in my experience, is half right. You want the place so that if you want it to be neat, you can make it neat. But it's not going to be neat all the time. You were talking about a Rolodex is, is essential for right. someone to try to create some organization on their desk. What else do you think are, are must-haves? Well, one thing is a file box. I mean, when you take something out of the inbox, in many cases, something simply needs to be filed. So there's no reason to put it down in your desk and mix it up. Just simply put it in a file box and be done with it. Pretty simple stuff. Exactly. Another real important factor is your calendar. Many pieces of paper can be eliminated by using a calendar. If you get a memo about something that's going to come up two days, two weeks, or something from now, in many cases, you can write that information on the calendar and then throw the piece of paper away. Not in my calendar. You, should see. you saw mine. Mine's <laughs> like this because all the papers are still sitting in there. I suspect there's a few of them where you could take a little two or three words off of the piece of paper, put it in the calendar, and then throw it away. And the, and the final files we're looking at here? Well, this is answering the question, what's the next action that needs to take? And this is my favorite one, Paul. It's calls waiting. I've got a piece of paper in my hand. I want to talk to you about it. You're not there, and I leave a message for you to return the call, and then you return the call, and I think, oh, what did I, I call put that call? Here's calls waiting, and to quickly give you an information about how to do it. Barbara, nice to see you. Thanks, Thanks for Paula. saving us some trouble. Last part of spring, this is leading into our guest this morning. And for those of you who've been putting off your spring house cleaning for lack of motivation, a lack of assistance, or simply because it's a rotten way to have to spend your time, <laughs> we're here not only to get you through it with a minimum amount of pain, but also to introduce you to some great gadgets that can bring order out of the chaos in your closets and cabinets. So here to guide us through this annual spring cleaning process is professional organizer and the author of Taming the Paper Tiger. We welcome Barbara Hemphill. Good morning, Hi, Barbara. Barbara. Welcome Good morning. morning. Northwest. Good morning. Nice to see you. Let me dress down. <laughs> get to work. Get to work. Get ready for this. This is right? always so important. This really is because we just can let paper overwhelm our lives. Well, in 15 years as a professional organizer, I've discovered that paper is the thing that really causes the most trouble. Other things are difficult, but paper is really the nemesis for a lot of people. So I just thought we'd talk about it. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, and my father used to say half of any job is having the right tool. And we're going to demonstrate some tools here today. And one of my favorites, if the paper clutters up on your kitchen counter or your dining room table or something, get a nice basket so that at least instead of it being all spread around, when you bring the mail in, you can at least put it in that basket and it'll be together. And even something as simple as that at least makes it look a little more aesthetic. But shouldn't you, as soon as the mail comes in, decide where it's going so that it doesn't stack up? Well, in the best of all possible worlds, that would be nice. But many people, you know, if you've had a long day at work and you're really tired, the last thing in the world you want to do is sort mail. Mm -hmm. So put it in there, and then when you're ready to deal with it, you can deal with it. Then you want to go to some other kinds of tools. For example, all right, let's take the mail out. All right, here's a bill. That's a category. And so if you have a, a filing system set up that's real easy to use, you can immediately drop it in bills to pay. We haven't got one here for that particular title, but that would be a, a good example. Or maybe somebody would have a colored file and they would put it in there. Or maybe it's even just a drawer or maybe a basket. Much of organizing is being consistent. It doesn't matter nearly so much what you do, but that you do it consistent. If you put it here, fine. If you put it here, fine. But just be sure you always do it the same way. Now, there are a lot of other things. Greeting cards. Somebody went to the store and picked up a greeting card. A little later in the show, we're going to show you some things to do with that. So I'm going to put in that basket the things that we're going to organize other places. Catalogs, that's a real big issue. Uh, again, having a specific place, a, a basket is a good idea or something like that that people can use. Here's some supplies. Somebody brought these home from the office or whatever, and they ended up with a pile of, of note paper. So, in your filing system, you could even have a file that said stationery and supplies, so that if you wanted to grab something, you could have it quickly. If this is not enough space for you, if you keep more than that, you may need another kind of tool, and later the show... Or if you steal more than that from the office, <laughs> then you need to have a big drawer. Yeah, right. Jim's got a steamer trunk at his house. <laughs> so, do you, is it just a matter of getting enough file cabinets? I mean, you're saying go invest in a file cabinet, because you're probably going to fill it up. Well, my experience is that in most households, a filing cabinet is a wonderful kind of a tool. Um, but not everybody has space for a filing cabinet, or they don't like the way it looks. Yeah, um, they're but pretty if you, ugly. Well, they make some really attractive ones these days. They make them in wood, they make them in painted colors, all sorts of things. And then there are things like this. See, down here we've got this kind of a... So if you like to work from the dining room table, 
and you can roll it in so that when you're ready to do your work, you've got everything. This is just a, a super tool. Here's another example of uh, a recipe, a wonderful little tool that they make that hangs on the front of a door. And people who have trouble with recipes, you can get files and put them in for the ones you haven't tried yet. And you may have two systems, maybe an index card box for those that you really like and you've used. Right. And then these are the ones you want to try. So you pick out four or five of them, get the ingredients that you want, and have them on hand. And then when you come home from work at night, you've got the recipe and you're ready to roll. Do you, do some people, you know, collect them and save them, then when they go through with these recipes and see if they want them, and they have a computer, do they just transfer them over there and then throw away the paper? My experience is you could do that, but my experience is that the time and trouble it takes is simply not worth it, so I don't think it really works. Besides when you want to call up the recipe, unless the computer's on the counter, exactly, exactly. you need it on a card, really, or something. Exactly. Yeah. It's okay. not really worth the time and trouble. I mean, it's much easier to just read it from something like this or transfer it to, a, to an index card. One of the things I want to bring up that you had mentioned earlier is do we really keep all these things? In the book I wrote, Taming the Paper Tiger, there's one chapter, which is my favorite, called The Art of Waste Basketry. And research shows that 80% of what we keep, we never use. Oh, I know. And we're a real keeper society. Oh, I mean, we just have, you know, so much stuff around. And so I never presume to tell a client what they should keep or what they should throw away. But I give them a series of questions that they could ask, like, is it recent enough to be useful? Or how difficult would it be to obtain again? Or uh, does it exist in another form? Recipes are a good example. I mean, I have worked with people that had all these recipes, and when they all got them together, they had duplicates, you know, mm -hmm. because they took taken the same recipe out. But my favorite art of waste basketry question is, what's the worst possible thing that would happen if I didn't have this? Well, how do you mean? Hmm. What do you do with a waste paper basket? I'll demonstrate Use what it. you're saying. Well, you you ask, what's the worst possible thing that would happen if I didn't have this recipe? Ah, uh, you know, it's really I can get it someplace else. So that's I the, can live without it. I see. So have a big waste paper basket. And, and that's an interesting point, having a big one, because my experience is that the more accessible it is, the more likely you're able to use it. For example, if you come home from work at night and you sit down at the kitchen table with your cup of coffee and your pile of mail and you start sorting it, and the first thing you find is something that goes in the waste basket and the waste basket's on the other side of the room, You'll You're too it. tired to go over there. Oh, well, I'll deal with that later. So one of the ways to solve the problem is simply to open the mail near the wastebasket. That's such a simple thing to do, and it really makes a lot of difference because a lot of things you will be able to just get rid of right there. What do you find most people hang on to that is never of any use? Well, that's really a, an individual kind of a thing, and I think that the thing is that if it's accessible, it can always be useful. Memorabilia is a big issue, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk later this morning about how you handle that. But that's an issue that people keep a lot of, but because they don't have it organized well, it's not accessible later on, and it becomes a tremendous, a tremendous burden. An example of where you want to organize something, warranties and instructions. Mm. You know, it's, yeah, daylight, it's daylight savings time, and you need right. to change the clock on your VCR. Mm -hmm. Very simple solution. If you have a filing system, going back to the filing cabinet you talked about, have a filing system, put all your warranties and instructions instructions in there, it's not going to be any big deal, deal to find it. Some of my other favorite categories, here's one that says Portland Info. You know, you get some tourist kinds of information, and then a friend comes, and they're going to do some sightseeing. You can give them this information and say, you know, here's some brochures about the things that we're going to be seeing. Um, another favorite is maps. Yeah. You get a map about how to go to a friend or how to get to some place, or maybe the university has a layout of the campus, and you're going to go and you want to know where it is. A great way to most Why? women don't have a file that says maps. <laughs> <clears throat> I know, men do. You know what we keep our maps? It's a trunk of our car, or under the seat. You keep uh -huh. them where they're handy, where you might need Which them. Which is a perfectly acceptable, my definition of organization is does it work and do you like it? Yeah, well, I never use a map, I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to. Now, now that we've tamed the paper trail, we'll move on to the kitchen and find out what great challenges we can find out behind those cabinets and those kitchen drawers. We'll be back right after that. The annual spring cleaning chores, the toughest part, I would say, is the kitchen, especially the kitchen cabinets. Well, they certainly can be a place to collect a lot of clutter very quickly. We, we've got a, a kitchen cupboard that we've shown up here, and we've tried to use some tools that will help. Notice how this shelf puts it stair-stepped so mm -hmm. that you can see it gives you a little bit a little bit more space. Um, again, the, we talked about the art of waste basketry with paper. The same thing's true of the stuff in the kitchen. I mean, a lot of stuff in the kitchen, 
We simply never use. Mm -hmm. Now here's another kind of a shelf. This one's a solid one as opposed to a wire one, but you can see how